Welcome to Business Line's State of the Economy podcast, where you'll find insight, analysis, and the story behind the numbers. Hello, friends. This is Amiti Sen. Welcome to this episode of Business Line's State of Economy podcast. Today, we will talk about the Red Sea crisis and the huge challenge that it is posing to India and the world with each passing day. Since November 2023, Yemen-based Houthi militia have been carrying out attacks on cargo ships in the Red Sea. The Houthis, who are also politically close to Iran, claim that the attacks are to show support for the Palestinians in Gaza, who are getting killed under the airstrikes of Israel while the Israel-Hamas war rages on. The Red Sea is a major shipping route for India for trading with key markets. The ongoing crisis is of major concern to the country. I have with me today Ajay Srivastav, former Indian Trade Service officer, and co-founder of Delhi-based think tank, Global Trade Research Initiative, to tell us more about the Red Sea crisis and what is at stake for India. Welcome, Mr. Shivastav. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Amiti. To begin with, uh, Mr. Shivastav, just give us an idea about how serious is the situation actually in the Red Sea right now as we talk. The situation is tense and uncertain with the potential for a serious escalation. So today... 95% of the vessels which were using Red Sea earlier, they have been rerouted around the Cape of Good Hope. And uh, compared to the Red Sea route, this uh, new route, Cape of uh, Good Hope route, adds about 4,000 to 5,000 nautical miles to the journey and translating into around 15 to 20 days more of voyage time. This means more uh, freight cost, delayed de- delivery, and so many other issues. So this in the long term could, uh, if the the situation continues, it will affect the global supply chains and uh, consumer goods in the long run. So US has formed maritime coalition. Israel is accusing Iran of backing the Houthis. So major power play may be at display. If it escalates, the situation may become more grim. We have to keep our fingers crossed. You know, um, it is obvious that so many countries are getting affected. But to what extent is India's own trade getting hit at the moment? So could you just uh, you know briefly touch upon the regions to which shipments are getting affected you know, to and fro from India? So about 20 to 25 percent of India's total merchandise trade passes through this Red Sea route. It's a big, big thing. So the nearly 90 percent of India's westward bound cargo destined for Europe, U.S. East Coast and North Africa was using this Red Sea route. It's being now rerouted around the Cape of Good Hope. The major region, as I say, is Europe, US East Coast and North North Africa. The cargo going there and the petroleum and other cargo coming from these places and Russia will be the affected regions. Right. Uh, So you already mentioned that, you know, uh, now uh, cargo is having to be rerouted through the Cape of Good Hope, which is in South Africa. So it's a much longer route. So could you give us an idea in days as to how much longer would shipments from, you know, say Mumbai port to Europe from the Cape of Good Hope would take? And how much would it mean in terms of, you know, more expenses for our exporters? Yes. So uh, in terms of uh, miles, we use the term nautical miles uh, for uh, sea voyages. And uh, if uh, consignment leaves Mumbai and has to move to Europe via Cape of uh, Good Hope uh, route, then it, the ship has to travel 4,000 to 5,000 nautical miles additional. It will translate into 15 to 20 days more voyage time. As far as cost is there, cost will depend. If uh, if we say talk about uh, expensive items where uh, volume is less, then the cost will be less. But say we talk about low-end items, say apparel, ores, then the cost will be more. The cost will depend on the type of cargo which is being carried. The additional time will be 15-20 days. And additional nautical miles traveled will be 4,000 to 4,000, 5,000 nautical miles. So uh, if we look at the situation right now, are there any specific exports? You know, you said that there are so many so many items that would get, uh, get affected it's across sectors. But are there any specific sectors which might get more affected than others in terms of exports? You know, refined petroleum products like diesel and gasoline, we export a lot of these to European countries. They face significant cost increases due to rerouting, making them less competitive in the European markets. Now, they will have the option to buy from 
other countries who can supply them at a cheaper rate. Similarly, chemicals and plastics. These are basically low value and high volume goods. And they become commercially unsustainable if uh, the freight cost increases beyond 20, 25%. Similarly, uh, exports of basmati rice, it can suffer quality degradation problem due to longer transit times. So these few products, say pet refined petroleum, diesel, gasoline, chemical, plastics, basmati rice, etc., will be the most affected problem. And there will be moderately affected exports like textiles and other manufactured goods, machinery, electronics. They will be affected by freight increase, but not so much. Right. You mentioned uh, these uh, high volume and low value goods. So I was actually having a chat with one, with an exporter of furniture items. So he was also saying uh -huh. the same thing because furniture items are like high volume and low value. So he was saying that how uneconomical it would now be to, you know, ship through the longer route. Yeah. So, absolutely. Absolutely. So and what about imports, you know, especially that of crude um, and all, uh, so do you think, so, uh, you know, India has been importing a lot of oil from Saudi Arabia. So, which is, I think on this contract route. So can crude prices go up because of higher logistics costs and what are the alternatives that we may have? So for crude import, India relies almost exclusively, not fully, but exclusively on Red Sea route for importing oil from Russia and other, and uh, Middle Eastern countries. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, others. And, uh, you know, on ground, the crude which is coming from Russia, about 45 million barrels is stuck at the sea. Now it will be taking a reroute for coming to India. It's at the sea. It's designed for India. So these things may lead to higher prices, but uh, prices, they are increasing after the Ukraine war. And uh, right now also they are increasing, but I will not put uh, this Red Sea crisis as the exclusive factor. So many factors are working for increase in oil prices. They are increasing. This will be one of the factors. But uh, we cannot isolate the impact of uh, Red Sea crisis on the on the oil price increase. Prices are increasing, but uh, many factors are there. The, right. the main factor is that we source most oil through this route. Mm -hmm. Right. So and what about other, other uh, items, you know, from which we source... Uh, uh, important inputs, you know, sophisticated inputs like, say, for automobiles. We source uh, a lot of inputs from Europe. So, uh, is there a possibility of supply chain disruptions hurting such sectors? Of course, you know, when we talk about global value chain integration, that means just in time supply. Nobody wants to keep an inventory. And same applies to most of the automobile manufacturers, essential machinery and, and parts manufacturers. Uh, machine tools manufacturers, they import the things when they get the order just in time to minimize inventory. All these supply chains will be impacted critically now. So, so initially, we thought uh, that our trade with Europe and Middle East will be impacted. But now if supply chains are impacted, the way we are integrated, many of the half the parts are supplied from Southeast Asia. They are not affected by this crisis. But if uh, supply from Europe is not coming and supply from Southeast Asia is coming, then there will be disruption in the factory. So we have to may have top the supply from Southeast Asia also. I'm, I mean, if the situation continues for some more time, then a big disruption is expected even on routes where which are not directly impacted by this crisis. Right. Uh, so, you know, in terms, if we talk numbers, so uh, if I understand correctly, I think around 230 to 240 billion of imports and exports uh, from India and to India go through this Red Sea route. So, um, so uh, according to your, you have, uh, GTRI has done a study on, you know, you have, you have looked extensively at the potential damage that, uh, international, uh, that India's international trade could suffer. So according to you, what, if you what percentage of this trade could get hit uh, because of this crisis so hit uh, when i say hit then it means uh, increase in freight cost insurance cost uh, at, that's the first level of hit immediate hit is there and second uh, some quality issues say i say basmati rice it may become bad due to longer duration journey if it's not fully protected and then some some products may become altogether uncompetitive because of uh, increase in freight. 
So I would not uh, like to put a number at this moment of time. I would love to wait for say two weeks more <laughs> to talk about how much will be the hit. Right sure. now, yeah. uh, I was talking to friends in the industry, and they are saying that uh, they will be negotiating new prices for uh, for uh, for the future shipments. They they are concerned the current shipment where they 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 are stuck with the current level of uh, commitment from the buyer and how they are going to pay for the additionalities so they are thinking if government or anybody can help them in this way but uh, a total disruption i would not hazard a guess right now i would prefer to wait for some more time yes Thank yes you. that's fair enough yeah so and what can the government do to help the situation uh, because i was just thinking like there is a, there is a, not too much uh, in terms of shipping cost uh, that the government could chip in. But uh, is there any way where, you know, government can uh, basically contribute to help exporters bear some of the, this added costs that are uh, happening because of this? Two things. One is government help may be needed only for the consignments at the sea. For future consignments, they may be affected because of higher freight costs, they may become uncompetitive, but government will have no role in those things. So government's primary role is to take care of increased freight or insurance costs for the consignments, which are still at the sea. And uh, there, two, three things are possible, but uh, I don't know how much they are feasible. One is, you know, initially people were talking about uh, if a government can pay a part of the freight, but how government will pay uh, part of the freight uh, when 80% of the Indian exports and imports uh, is carried away by foreign vessels. Um, it's not Indian shipping liners. So getting those rates, uh, how much is the premium they are charging? It it happens mostly at, at a very confidential level. So government transparent intervention is very difficult, even if government wants. Second is about uh, insurance. Now, if uh, ECGC insures these, uh, these shipments and if any untoward uh, incident like this happens where longer uh, journey is to be undertaken by consignment then of course ECGC will the the the, the exporter may claim the damages from the ECGC for such uh, un unforeseen not normal uh, circumstances. So ECGC may have to bear that cost. ECGC means government will be indirectly bearing those costs and most of uh, about 75 to 80 percent of the cost will be borne by government that through ECGC only, because ECGC reinsures just 25 to 30 percent of uh, the insurance does for the exporters. So government will be bearing indirectly this cost, insurance cost. But the freight cost, I am unable to understand in today's context how even if government wants, how it will work out. It will be difficult. Thank you. Right. So uh, you already uh, you know explained a bit. You know what would happen if this crisis plays out. But in a nutshell. How do you see things playing out over the coming months? No idea. You know, it's a bigger Middle Eastern power play. Houthis, I mean, they are just acting at behest of somebody. They are just the pawns. They are just the outer growth of the deeper problem. And those problems, Middle Eastern power play is very complex. So I don't know. I would love to wait for 15, 20 days more, one month more to see because America is involved. Israel is involved. Iran is involved. Saudi Arabia is involved. If it escalates, it can become very big involving most of the world. But uh, we hope it's not a skelet. And uh, if I want to be precise, I have no idea because things are changing almost every day. And uh, it, it may totally de-skelet also if uh, better counsel prevails. But, uh, but let's see. I have no idea. Frankly, I'm totally ignorant on this. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Shivasa, you know, for basically helping us uh, understand this complex situation a bit better. So while we all hope that the situation would de-escalate and things would normalize, we will all keep strict eye on the developments. And maybe, you know, some weeks later, we would uh, invite you back to for a reassessment of the situation. Thank you so much for joining us. Would love to. Thanks, Samiti. Thanks for inviting me.